Okay, greetings, brothers and sisters. I had to, you know, someone posted a tweet or something. I saw something briefly like three, four days ago about how Israel's next big strike would be on Iranian nuclear enrichment program. And, you know, they don't have the ability to uh, make, you know, bombs and missiles, but they do have um, enough uranium now to do that. And so Israel's always been about limiting Iranian capability in terms of nuclear weapons. And I searched for that on Google, and they didn't produce the results that I had earlier heard. You know, and I've seen that their search engine is just, I mean, it's my favorite search engine just by the way it looks. But I had to go to a different search engine because duck a go go. What's it called? Duck a something. Um, because of, you know, they were hiding this. And this is from the Times of Israel uh, from April 9th. Isra Israel prepared to strike Isra Iranian nuclear facilities if Tehran launches attack. If Iran attacks Israel directly in response to last week's strike in Damascus, see, this is before Iran launched this attack. Isra Isra Israel will retaliate by striking targets in Iran and they said here that um, include the preparing to target Iranian nuclear facilities and other key infrastructure. Um, so this is what they've always wanted to do anyway, is Israeli threats to bomb nuke sites as Iran backs down from direct attack, report says. And so these were the early threats that Israel produced. And that would definitely be, um, you know, pushing towards nuclear war. And then this, um, we broke Roe v. Wade, Trump's brags about eliminating abortion rights. Um, we don't need it any longer because we broke Bro Roe v. Wade. The states are working very brilliantly to work in their way to its uh, supposed to, the way it's supposed to. Um, you know, it's not a winning issue for Trump. A sheriff, a felon, and a conspiracy theorist walk into a hotel. They're there for the same reason. You know, this term, conspiracy theorist, the way they've used it to demonize anybody who questions the liars and the cheaters and the scumbags, right? <laughs> anybody who questions the official story put out by people who are known liars, criminals, deceivers, all these things. A conference of far-right sheriff's group this weekend drew a parade of felons, disgraced politicians, election deniers, conspiracy theorists, and in the end, a few sheriffs. Um, you know, the way they've demonized anybody who questions, you know, that says there's conspiracies. I mean, think about that. Because people conspire. It's a word for it because people do it, have been doing it forever, and people with power do it, um, you know. Rumors swirl of Chris Cuomo CNN comeback after Netflix's later experiment is axed. This was he was one of their big stars. In the wake of the failure of Charles Barkley and Gail King's primetime talk show, sources at CNN have been gossiping about the network's next move. King has insisted it's always a limited run. Um, you know, Charles Barkley is one of their big assets. Like people like Charles and. Uh, you know, NBA, you know, the NBA show um, on T TNT. But that doesn't translate. Like, people think that they can translate popularity in one area to something else, and it doesn't work, right? Um, you know, it's just whatever it is. But this is their alternative, like Chris Cuomo's. <laughs> so let me just add to this. I'm editing. But Chris Cuomo's, you know, the CNN golden age, um, Recently, like they've had their ups and downs, but they really never were able to compete with Fox. You know, and Fox is a singular entity, but Fox had always had more passion. And Fox sucks. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying Fox is as good or as better or worse than CNN. They both, they all suck. But CNN and MSNBC can never compete with Fox. And during their heyday, when so many people and liberals hated Trump. They had, you know, a surge of viewers. It was, it was still less than Fox, but 
you know, splitting one third of the market, they were doing fairly well. But people got Trump fatigue after Trump, you know, the whole election thing. The liberals, they just, you know, they just don't feel that strongly about Trump anymore. And Biden ended up sucking. And then there was the COVID debacle and then all the things with the economy and all these things that people were more concerned with. And so the Cuomos who were once, you know, they were talking about Andrew Cuomo replacing Biden on the ticket because Biden was, you know, doing fairly uh, poorly when he was running against Trump. And, you know, he was a hero, but then they got rid of him because he, you know, killed 9,000 people or whatever it was. The the people he sent, um, he sent sick people to nursing homes <laughs> and then covered up the, the death toll. Like he erased like 9,000 people from the, he left the data out. So they looked like their numbers were better. New York was the worst state out of any state in terms of, you know, the whole respirator thing that they were doing there. And so they got rid of him. They they trumped up these, you know, bogus charges. You know, Andrew Nips Cuomo, he has nipple rings or nipple dumbbells or whatever. <laughs> but, um, you know, they, they trumped up these charges against Cuomo's because they didn't want to deal with the massive lawsuit that was inevitably going to come for the wrongful deaths of all these people in New York State. And Chris Cuomo, who you know, tried to protect his brother and manipulate things at CNN was fired for that. But he was their big ratings getter. I mean, he carried Don Lemon's show. When he, when Chris Cuomo's was fired, then Don Lemon's real numbers showed up and he had like no audience. Like the segue between Chris Cuomo and Don Lemon's was hilarious. So I used to have these things called the douche off. And so then they went, they tried CNN Plus, they brought in a guy who was, um, you know, the producer, uh, Stephen Colbert's Late Show, which sucks. I don't know why they did that. He was a disaster. You know, they've um, gone through all these people. They fired their their head guy for an affair that he had with a coworker, and they have been lost ever since. They're losing money. The the uh, CNN Plus was a disaster. You know, they're paying that guy, uh, Chris Wallace like millions upon millions of dollars and he was getting like 5,000 views <laughs> on CNN plus. So it was bad, right? It was really bad. And then they, you know, fired all these people and they tried to bring in Charles Barkley and, you know, all these things that they tried to do and it's failed. It's continuous. It's going to continue to fail. Plus they're always trying to demonize truthers and get YouTube and these other platforms to censor us and alternative media people, not just truthers, but anybody who's, you know, not CNN, that's verbalizing their own opinions. They're trying to scrub that from the internet, and it's not working because no one wants to go back to CNN. They could destroy all of the social media platforms, and people are not going to go back to CNN and MSNBC and Fox. And young people are never going to go there. They don't even know what it is, and they don't like it when they see it, right? And so bringing back Chris Cuomo is not the solution. There is no solution. Like just, you know, roll on your back and expose your belly like a beat dog and just, you know, <laughs> admit your defeat because you've lost. There's nothing there. There's no path forward to you. Your audience is literally dying. You know, their audience is just older people. And when their audience is slowly dying out, they're not going to bring in young people because young people aren't, you know, about that kind of news media. They, they didn't grow up on it. And they don't like it when they see it. Israeli military intel chief resigns over October 7th. Netanyahu vows to reject U.S. sanctions on IDF unit. Um, so, you know, the tension there with him and the Biden administration. Marjorie Taylor Greene says Speaker Mike Johnson should resign. You know, which I covered yesterday on my other channel. Here it is here. House Speaker Mike Johnson facing a possible mutiny from fellow Republicans. Mike Johnson has betrayed America. He's be betrayed Republican voters. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene is part of a trio of hardline conservatives promising to kick Johnson out. The House will be in order. The latest effort. Because, you know, I said this on my other channel yesterday. The Democrats want to support the U Ukrainian war and get their whatever they're getting at, kickbacks out of that. And the Republicans want to support Israel. They both kind of want to support Israel, but the Democrats less so. 
And because of that, they made a deal to, you know, give away your money to these two things that the majority of Americans are against, right? But Marjorie Taylor Greene, we're going to get into Fetterman. I got a whole thing on Fetterman. We haven't covered Fetterman in a while. And he's just out there, like, wrecking Democrats. Like, <laughs> But she and Fetterman agree on the same thing here. Um, Israel has a right to defend themselves, and they're very capable of doing it. Israel has a right to defend themselves. This is from a while back, October 16th. But she praised Israel. Uh, she's against the funding of the Ukrainian uh, war, whatever. She's hesitant a little bit more on Israel. But, you know, she's one of these people that just says everything pro-Israel, right? Because the Republicans are just very pro-Israel. We'll get into Fetterman in a moment. But Elon Musk admitted Neuralink is you know, part of the transhumanism. I used to cover this quite significantly. There's a lot of people, billionaires, people who are funding this idea that their, you know, their thought patterns and their minds could be transferred to some sort of, um, you know, computer type software hardware and they could um, live forever as transhumanists, as some sort of, um, you know, merging with uh, technology like this singularity thing and he confirms that this is you know a pathway this Neuralink. One of the things that you said early on when you founded Neuralink I yeah. would put words in your mouth more along the lines if you can't beat them join them when it comes to uh, merging the neocortex in the cloud adding that additional computational capacity and sensory capacity to the neocortex Yeah again this is actually something that uh, Ian Banks uh, in the culture books, which I really recommend everyone read. In the uh, culture books, there's uh, something called a neural lace. So all the humans have this neural lace. It's not essentially a high bandwidth uh, brain to computer interface. It's so good that it actually retains all of your memories and kind of brain state. So even if your physical body dies, you can kind of re reincorporate another physical body and retain, you know, pretty much your original memories and, and brain state. Um, I don't think it's a long way from that. Um, we only just had our first um, uh, early in the human, which is going, it's going quite well. Um, the, uh, the, the first patient is actually able to control their computer uh, just by thinking. So like this first, the first uh, product uh, we call telepathy, where you can control your computer and phone, and through, and through your computer and phone almost anything, just by thinking. One of the things that you know, I've talked about this before. These are people who don't believe in a soul. And they think their minds are everything. But you have a heart and you have a, you know, you have an essence. And you can't transfer that to a computer. And it can't be done. And so your thoughts, your mind, maybe your mental patterns, your tendencies, your memories even, I don't know. But that's not you, right? <laughs> it's like, you know, a version of things that you have, you know, that you, it's, it's your information, it's not you. Your information is not you. Um, but they really are obsessed with this because they want to live forever because they don't believe in a soul, they don't believe in these other things. And it's one of the most dangerous things out there. Um, you know, there's this thing with this guy setting himself on fire, this, uh, this c conspiracy theorist guy, who, of course, who writes a manifesto. Somebody sent me a video, I'm not going to show you it here, but the, like he's on the gurney and he doesn't even look like he has real burns. And, you know, this thing's just fake. Anytime there's a manifesto, right? And, of course, the guy's a conspiracy theorist because they want to demonize anybody questioning the official story. It's just getting goofy out there. So we haven't checked in on Fetterman in a while, so he, this is his own post. This is dark-branded meme that they put on an Huffington Post. When they said that, you know, Jojo Bagu had this, you know, this is when they had the, um, what was the thing of Brandon? <laughs> was it Let's Go Brandon? And it was really F you Biden, right? And so they made this thing of dark Brandon. Okay, so um, let me just break in here. I'm kind of inspired to say this because you have to realize how you've been trained to think. Like I redid this in my own internal world. Like I overwrote the programming I was given. And many of you haven't done this or even thought about it and even understand where you're coming from. Because the way that you've been programmed is that you 
look for people who have what you consider the same beliefs as you do, right? The same kind of basic beliefs and position on things. And that's how they've grouped people together, right? You know, there's two major categories, and there's Democrats and there's Republicans, there's right-leaning people and left-leaning people, and you're supposed to find your way into one of those groups and then maybe some subgroups within those groups, right? And now there's this kind of alternative group that's like, you know, alternative media truther people, which again is more fragmented, but it's the same kind of thing where you seek people out that agree with what you, your worldview, and that those people are the good people, and the people that don't agree with your worldview are the bad people. And you don't look at anything else. So when you are evaluating people like me, content, content producers like me, it's whether the person agrees with your belief system or not. And when you, you know, look towards people as sources and you know, people you're willing to listen to and you look at publications and news media, I'm going to get into this with Fetterman in a bit, right? You know, and like he's um, going against the grain of his, um, many of his constituents and he's criticizing Biden and Harris, right? For, uh, he's breaking on them over Israel, right? But what you try to do is match up your beliefs. That's why I get people who comment all the time and say, well, you know, I don't agree with everything that you say. And of course you don't. Like, I don't agree with everything that I say. You know, like, I mean, Tuesday Paul isn't going to agree with Wednesday Paul, right? Like, it's just, we are always changing our positions on things. And things that we really believed in maybe six months ago, maybe we have even the opposite opinion on that thing now. So your beliefs aren't a valid way of establishing trust with a person. Oh, this person believes with me. I trust this person. Because, you know, they're always changing and they're never going to be identical. And that doesn't mean the person's a good person. I'm going to get into this. There's a meme I saw comparing Jesus to Muhammad. I'm going to get into this with Christianity. But I just received a stupid comment from a, you know, flat earther, right? And again, you know, this, um, there are plenty of flat earthers that come to my channel that, you know, are, are not a problem at all, right? And they, no, no, I don't believe in their whatever it is, but it's fine because they see have, see that I there's value here aside from this issue. But this person writes, this person has a Canadian flag as their um, whatever it is. You seriously believe that you live on a spinning ball and call yourself a truther? It literally takes two minutes of research to know the facts. You might have lost your followers organically. Um, because I was talking about how, you know, I'll say things and then people will leave or whatever it is. And then all the other stuff I was talking about in terms of shadow banning and, and the rest of it. Now, I could talk about Flat Earth and how bad it sucks and, you know, they don't have a model that works. But my belief is I don't believe anything on planet Earth because this life is illusionary. It's called Maya in ancient, ancient Sanskrit. Maya is illusion. Third dimensional life is illusion. It seems real because it's physical, but it's all illusionary and our souls are what we really are. And so our egos and our physical bodies are a manifestation of something that has to exist in an illusionary world. And we're never going to get to the truth because the world itself, this place that we're in is like a video game, a simulation, and it's not our true, you know, essence, right? We don't even know ourselves because our egos and our physical life is a, a mere reflection or a manifestation of our soul, which is not our soul itself. And so life on planet Earth is illusionary. Like this whole idea of a truth movement is ridiculous in that sense, because you're not going to find the truth in the third dimensional aspect of planet Earth, your physical body and the surroundings. You might find things about the illusion, and some of the stuff about the illusion is truth, and it's a, you know, like a lower level of truth, but to penetrate to true truth, to real truth, you have to find it on the spiritual realm of existence. But setting that aside, let's say I decided that the pathway, like my underlining goal here was to get as many followers and make as much money as possible. And I hired some, you know, people like polling number people who understood, you know, who could gather data about my target audience here, which is the truth community. 
And they found out that if I told everyone I was a flat earther, that I would have a very strong support group and I could milk them for money. And this has been done, you know, fairly recently, um, where, you know, there's strategy to get as many followers as possible. And I didn't actually believe in flat earth, but I told you I did. Or I told you I was a Christian. You know, this, like this dope would say, oh, wow, this guy's good and would, you know, be my passionate follower. Even though I was lying to you just to extract you from your, extract money from you and resources and support, right? And, you know, it would seem like we have the same beliefs. Or if I was just a disreputable person who kind of believed in flat earth or maybe not or whatever, but was just saying these things, but wasn't someone who was, you know, honest or actually seeking the truth, right? And I would gain lots of dopey followers who are belief centered, who just want somebody to tell them that they're right, especially somebody who's like a celebrity or a pseudo celebrity or somebody who's important tells them that their beliefs are right. You want somebody to agree with you. And that's not seeking truth, right? What you should seek in a person is that a person is, you know, fundamentally honest and seeking truth themselves. And they're giving you their honest opinions on things. And that whether they agree with you or not, or you agree with them, you can at least trust that this person's being sincere, right? But calling somebody a shill because they disagree with your beliefs makes you weak and pathetic, right? You're mentally weak, you're emotionally unstable, and you're not, you know, basing anything on truth. You're looking for people who agree with your beliefs, and you're never going to find that because it doesn't exist. Because like I said, beliefs are always changing. You know, there has to be some some agreement. Like you just can't have, you know, dopey um, sheeple who may be honest about what they believe, but they're so, you know, they have such poor judgment they're not worth listening to. So there has to be some, you know, sense of, well, this person is, you know, at least um, they make sense and they are, you know, they're on a deeper level of consciousness. But it centers around the sincerity of the person, right, and how honest they are about what they're going to tell you. And an honest person doesn't look at the ramifications of what they're saying. In terms of popularity, I mean, you have to, you know, be safe, right? You can't say things that are, you know, you're going to risk your life or whatever. I can't say certain things on YouTube because of the, you know, the community guidelines and things. But in terms of adjusting what I believe or what I say I believe to pander to you, like if you have people that pander to you, and that's what politicians do, and you're used to panderers, right? And you're addicted to panderers, people who are telling you what you want to hear in your life and in your, you know, this, whatever this internet thing is and whatever else it is. You want people to just agree with you and tell you what you want to hear. You don't want any kind of information coming on and coming to you that's going to make you rethink your position on life and, you know, any number of things that you have to change. You don't want to be told you have to change. You want to be told that you're right and that the people who suck that you don't agree with the opposite people, the people who are your enemies, the people that you hate, the people who are your, you know, in a binary system are your adversaries. They're the ones who have to change. We have to get rid of the deep state. We have to get rid of Joe Biden. We get Trump in there, you know, these things. And you want to believe in that, but it doesn't exist because you have to change, right? And an honest person, a truthful person, a person worth listening to is going to compel you to change, is going to compel you to confront your faulty beliefs and you know anything that's inside of you that has to change for you to grow spiritually and every other possible way as a person and very few people in the truth community are able to do that they're able to separate their their beliefs from you know their their butthurtness and the things that they're you know they can't change on and they don't give value to somebody actually telling them the truth you know even if that person's wrong about things they're at least that's what they believe right they, they want panderers. You're addicted to pandering. And this person, this flat earther, is addicted to pandering. <laughs> you know, like that's, you know, you want a panderer. You want somebody pandering to you. And so you're worthless because you just are looking for somebody to tell you what you want to hear. Trump does that. And Biden does that. Hillary Clinton does that. That's what politicians do. They do the research and they, they find the best possible position 
or their you know popularity or whatever it is and they tell you that position they don't believe in that position oftentimes they might not even understand that position and they certainly aren't going to back that position when it comes to policy or you know anything they do as an elected official but they're going to tell you what you want to hear to get your vote and support or at least make it look like it's you know it's a, a, a close enough election that they can you know rig it or whatever else it is right and that's you know so if, if you like that system which you don't then you know stick with it but if you see that system as being something that's fraudulent then stop looking for people to pander to you look for people that tell you the truth or tell you their truth and are sincere about it and if you can't you know understand that then what the f are you doing here right anyways let's get back to it and fetterman has it right um so guy in trump rally in pa today in some kind of american flag santa claus outfit it's a deep state rigged fetterman's election and he put this um meme up as a result of that and so um he has this is his he has this thing up in his wall he's put up all the hostages <laughs> of the israeli hostages that's allegedly hamas has and um i don't know just classic fetterman stuff here trying to hammer trump and then over here is his um his other account and i'm going to get into some of the things he said here but he's just very pro um you know israel here he has the the, the pictures there anti-semitic unconscious conscionable and dangerous white house response to chaos at columbia um there's protesters he's just all this is pretty much everything post now is about israel and is the israeli hostages and um he's gone up against the liberals that you know he wouldn't be elected today here he is with his but this is where him and marjorie taylor green you know have some cross-sectional interest i'm here in my office and all of these hostages they've been up on our walls for over six months and that's exactly where they're going to stay <laughs> they're going to stay there until everyone is brought back home and I'll never understand why we're not talking about that more and why there's not more stories about that. Because there's a genocide going on where kill children are getting killed, you piece of crap. I mean, you know, I mean, that's the other, if that's true, I don't know, you know. Like, you know, anything that comes from the, the mainstream, the show, is something that is questionable, right? That in the media, we don't even know exactly where they are and if they are even okay. It's very clear that we always make sure that we always talk about this and demand that and make sure until every last one is accounted for and brought back home because anyone wants peace, we have to do this. And remember that if Hamas would just send everybody home and surrender all of the death, destruction, and misery in Gaza would end. Exactly, it's Hamas's fault. If they would just surrender, admit they were wrong, and apologize, and say Israel's the greatest country on the earth, on earth, this would probably almost end as soon as Israel claims the rest of the land they want there. Right now, our office will never stop. His office will never stop. Talking about this until everyone is brought back home. He's just such a humanitarian. Um, so this is his, you know... Uh, this you know he's got ross here get a load of this simp and marjorie taylor green um so this is about him not agreeing with her on ukraine but they agree on israel and so that's fetterman's tweeter but this is on tiktok Senator, I always thought you were an anti-racist, but it seems like you value Israeli lives more than you value Palestinian lives. Is that still true? With, still with Israel. So you think an Israeli life is more valuable than a Palestinian life? Okay. Okay. Senator, still with Israel is what he said there, right? Still with Israel. So he's criticized Biden... And Kamala Harris over Israel. 
Yeah. <laughs> I do want to ask you about foreign policy, if I can. Following the Iranian attack on Israel over the mm. weekend, you told CNN that you disagreed with President Biden urging Israel not to retaliate. What do you say to national security officials who say that they are concerned that an Israeli response against Iran could provoke a larger war? Well, no. I, what, what I do, what I do believe is, is that we need to to follow Israel on that. We don't have follow him to agree with it, but we need to stand with Israel uh, in that situation. He you don't have to agree with it; just follow them blindly. Let Israel lead America. Is our special ally, and they're it, our special ally. They're our special friend. It's your, you know, it's your, your dad's special lady friend. It's the democracy there in the Middle East as well, and we can never forget that all of this, all the tragedy, the death, and the destruction is all because of Hamas and what Hamas. They they've done on October 7th as well again. As and well again, and when they did that as well again. To anybody watching, it's like in, in doubt, lean on and, de and decide with and standing with democracy and our key ally, Israel. But to be clear, uh, though you support standing with our key ally, Israel, doesn't the U.S. have some, some stakes here, given the fact that if this were, if Israel were to, to respond in some sort of rash way, perhaps even attacking within Iran, well, that really could spark a wider war that would draw the U.S. into it more, further? Well, I, I, I think Israel is going to respond in an appropriate way. Uh, I think they are. I, you know, I don't know. I think they will. And if they don't, who knows? Who cares? World War III is not such a bad thing. I, I don't expect it's going to be anything drastic or anything like that. But let's really talk about that, that Iran launched, what, two to three hundred drones and other kind of... It was two or three hundred. ...missiles as well, too. And as well, too. They did it as well, too. They did. The 200, 300, I don't know, 1,000, a million, I don't know how many it was, but it was, it was, it was a lot. This is that, if anything, that just only underscores why we need to lean in and stand with Israel on that. It's, it's just been very clear for, for me, and it's okay if somebody disagrees with that. That's, that's, that's reasonable. It's okay if you disagree with it, but, like, I, you know, this is... Uh, this is, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I, like I don't have any more power than the average Joe. I just don't think it's really controversial to anybody to to lean in on with with Israel. Let me ask you if I can very quickly about some politics back in your home state. I want to ask you specifically about. So you know, this guy is a disaster right now for the Democrats because it's the youth that they need, right? And the youth is clearly, and you know, this moving forward into the future, like this is, you know, in the Truth Movement. There's people who came in in the big event 2001. And then there's people that came in with the economic collapse. And there's people that came in, you know, who woke up with um, the pizza thing or the thing with the schools that was happening and, and all these other, you know, these so-called tragic things that were happening. And then there are people that came in um, because of, you know, the QB move, all those kind of things, right? And whatever issue you came in with that sort of, you know, you were impassioned with, got emotional about, is always going to sting for you. Like, it's just, it's the original one. When you realize that, you know, there's no such thing as justice or fairness and, you know, all these things. And for young people who are waking up to the fact that Israel is you know, having a genocide, all these college kids, that's always going to be a little bit of a, you know, sore subject for them. And it's always going to be a big deal. So they're, you know, going to be anti-Israel probably for the rest of their lives. Most of these college kids, the ones who are passionate about it. It's just the way people are hardwired. And the Democrats are, you know, on the verge of losing all these people. Of course, there's nobody out there who's, who's a politician or really any kind of mainstream person that's out there, you know, pushing for the Palestinians, which is, you know, it also could drive those people more to alternative media. So this is CNN's original post. This happened right after this so-called counterstrike by Iran. And it's very telling, right? This is totally Fetterman. I mean, he's just, you know, his mind doesn't work right. Like whatever's happened to him because of the stroke and these other things and this depression... The guy is mentally incompetent, and he can't handle... Like he says, when he hears people talking, it sounds like Charlie Brown, you know, the way adults sounded to Charlie Brown and the Peanuts gang. Like he can't process things. He's got to have um, 
like a tablet around with him. He can't process reality around him. He's not a good public speaker. He's impaired, like he's handicapped, mentally handicapped, right? And yet he's a senator. <laughs> uh, senator, what is your reaction to Iran's attack on Israel, and how worried are you that this is the beginning of an open war between the two countries? Well, it, a couple of things, actually. I think it really demonstrates how it's astonishing that we are not uh, standing firmly with Israel and there should never be any kinds of conditions on all of that. When a nation can launch hundreds of drones uh, towards Israel, and I'm not gonna be talking about conditions ever. And second, I, I think that also was Iran had to have some fireworks after Israel uh, smoked that Iranian uh, general and, and I am here for that. <laughs> what has one thumb and brain damage? This guy. <laughs> um, you know, I um, had to edit out. They, they're showing the drone strikes as they talk. So as they're talking here, the drone strikes are going on. And it's just, you know, they're, they're just like little, like he said, fireworks, right? So he says Iran had to have their fireworks. Nobody in Israel was killed. Almost nothing happened. It was a success in defending off these drone strikes. It was, you know, Iran can claim whatever they're claiming to their citizens. But in terms of the official story, this was a failure for Iran and triumph for Israel. And Fetterman's acknowledging that. But then he wants to give Israel a blank check. He said this, in, and he's going to say this again here. He said it in the other interview as well as well too <laughs> and he's like Israel smoked their general and I'm, I'm all here for that right but assassination is just cool and when it's Iran who we've wrecked their country America wrecked Iran you know there's Operation Ajax I've talked about that so much has been acknowledged by even Hollywood and the CIA has admitted to it they had this democratic moderate leader you know a guy who was elected uh, from a, not democratic, but from a democracy. He was fairly elected, this guy Mossadegh. He was bringing in business. He was modernizing, modernizing uh, Iran. And he was a moderate. He wasn't rad radical right, certainly. He wasn't, you know, left. And he was moving the country forward. And he wanted to, you know, British Petroleum created the oil industry in Iran. And they were taking 80% of the profits and only giving 20% to the country that they were taking their oil from. And he said, no, we'll split it 50-50, which was more than fair. But British Petroleum and the British, you know, whatever, the people there, the, I mean, the whole, the whole thing, was so greedy, they said they got C the CIA, which is an American organization, which, you know, raises a lot of red flags, to take this guy out. And they put out all this propaganda and they created all these false scandals and they backed all these thugs and they got rid of the guy they put in this guy Shah of Iran who was you know a um, horrible bloodthirsty person and the people of Iran rebelled and to such an extent they have this you know horrific government now and the people of Iran have suffered so much because of Americans taking out their leader it's evil it's an act of an evil empire and, you know, we own that. We should own that. And it's admitted to. It's like openly admitted to. And that's, you know, something that we owe to the Iranian people for that mistake, right? We got involved in their, you know, government or whatever it was. And Israel has done horrific things, just like, you know, all countries do. Israel has their own specific thing in that region. And so there's no good guys here. But Fetterman thinks it's okay for Israel to assassinate generals and retaliate whatever way they choose because they're a democracy and they're our special friend, our special ally. And this is the epitome of hypocrisy. The problem is for him that the Democrats and the real passionate ones are against this and he doesn't get it because he can't process what's going on around him because he's brain damaged or he's a really good actor, which I don't think is the case. And he's such a shill for Israel that he's you know on the wrong side of Biden and Harris in a swing state where people are pissed at him because they got a, a brain-dead, mentally incompetent dude <laughs> as their senator. And, you know, he's I guess he was considered better, better than Dr. Oz because Dr. Oz sucked. But now they're going into this election 
And, you know, rigging is going to be a lot harder for them, you know, in terms of the mail and ballots and all the stuff that happened. And so, like, this is, you know, a disaster. He's already getting hammered. Biden's getting hammered in Michigan. And there's the Kennedy factor. And so everything's lining up against Biden. You know, people are pissed about the economy. He's, he's, mental, he's mentally breaking down. You've got a couple of guys with brain damage. They're running in Pennsylvania with Biden and, and uh, Fetterman. And, like, you know, he's on the wrong side of this thing. <laughs> uh, and I think it's just a matter of theater part of it as well, too. And it, finally, it demonstrates how unstable things are and why we need to lean in and stand with Israel. How do you think Israel should respond? Should Israel strike within Iranian territory, or are you concerned that that might only escalate matters further? Well, I'm, I'm not going to uh, suggest that what Israel should or shouldn't do on that. But I also do think that Iran is pleased with, they have enough of money on the table with all of its proxies all around in the region as well, too. And Iran certainly can't take on Israel. Uh, and certainly not us. So I think they would just like to keep things as they go. And then after they made a point uh, back, I, I think they could go pretty quiet and go back to just using their proxies. I love it when they use their proxies. <laughs> it's great when they use their proxies. Um, you know, he's saying it's just theater. But then he has all these positions on it, right? And the whole thing is theater. Like it's, you know, Israel wants all of Palestine and then all the rest of that region that was, I mean, they want the world, you know, they was stopping them, right? Like in terms of their desire for whatever it is. Like they want world domination, just like all these other countries that are players in this, you know, these powers, the world powers. They all want what America has. They all want to be America, right? Like, you know, when you're in a competitive sport, you're like, oh, no, I'm, I'm happy to be a second fiddle or I'm happy to be third you know you want to win and these countries just want more and more power and they want the american economy they want the american military and america's folding like a card house so it's completely you know the potential's there um but this guy like this is you know an indication i mean this is this guy's you know a, a significant political figure a national political figure in america and like he's um, his president is brain dead and the other guy's Trump, right? <laughs> like, yeah, this is the best America can produce in terms of political leadership. A senior administration official tells CNN that, that President Biden told Prime Minister Netanyahu that the U.S. will not participate in any offensive operations against Iran. Do you think that's the right call uh, or should direct U.S. military action, as some of your colleagues in the Senate are suggesting, uh, should that be on the table? So I'm glad I blew this up. This m and is chewing gum. He's being asked a question right now by Jake Tapper. That's what I just showed you. And he's chewing gum. He's chewing or chewing something. I believe it's gum. <laughs> he's in an interview wearing a sweatshirt and chewing gum. I, I, I don't agree with that, you know, and... Uh... I'm just, I'm just think we should follow and have Israel's back in the situation. I don't agree with the president. Uh, that doesn't change anything that he's a fantastic uh, president. And I'm proud to stand with him and campaign for him and vote for him. So I don't know what is mental impairment or what is being a shill for Israel or what, you know, it's hard to calculate here. But what he's saying here is because any U.S. involvement, anything that escalates a thing with Iran, is World War Three? Like it's, you know, that's where this is heading. And, you know, I don't think his endorsement of Biden is a good thing at this point because the Pennsylvania people are like, oh my God, we elected this dope, right? Like, you know, like the people who are Trumpers are more energized and people who are moderates or independents are, you know, bummed out by the way things have gone. And I don't think anybody, you know, the majority of people don't want you know, they don't do real polling data, but the majority of people are done paying for these foreign wars. They want to get this Ukrainian thing done, and they don't want to support Israel. And his party and the people that, you know, many young people in Pennsylvania, they, they're the, you know, they would be the, the swing votes here. And they, they're trying to get the young people out, and they're going to, you know, his position is killing them, right? And, you know, I mean, I just think it's, 
mental impairment. I mean, who knows with this guy? Uh, Marco Rubio was just on the show, and he said the White House leaking the fact that Biden told Netanyahu not to directly respond, to take the win, uh, quote unquote, uh, was uh, offensive to him because it seemed to suggest that he it's Biden trying to appease um, the far left in his party. Uh, what's your response? Well, I, I, I don't know. I mean, the president is entitled to his own views and whatever he decides to do. Uh, but but I, I would never capitulate, uh, capitulate to uh, the, the fringe. I'll never pander to that as, as well. In fact, that helps, uh, that empowers Hamas. And Hamas is, can, they're actually convinced that they are winning the PR war. And they're never going to negotiate uh, at this point. They think that they're going to hold on to the very end. And I, and I know why they're not willing to provide any kind of proof of life. So this is how bad CNN sucks, right? Um, there's, you know, I cut it, I cut this out because YouTube will have a problem with it. And they might even have a problem with it. There are sirens in the background. On the side, I blew this up, right? So this was small. These two guys, it was small. Their, um, you know, their faces were small. And then on the side, they showed the rockets and they showed all the stuff happening in Israel. And they have the sirens and, you know, you can hear the sirens in the background. They're talking. And now you hear people yelling in either uh, Hebrew or Arabic to create, you know, a, it's disturbing. It's, it's, it causes anxiety. John Fetterman, it's unclear what his religion is, but he has, he says he was raised as an, Orthodox here it says this here. Let me find that. I'm gonna switch back over to my browser. It says here um it says where is it? John Fenn was raised in a Christian home and yet has ties to the Jewish community. Jake Tapper is a Jewish person. And so, you know, I don't know where Jake Tapper actually stands publicly on this thing. But it's a clear case of one side killing another side, right? There's well over 30,000 Palestinians dead. It's something like 12 to 14,000 children. And, you know, it's something that's been a one-sided affair the whole time. Palestine doesn't have an army. I documented this in my early coverage of this, right? And so it should be a one-sided type situation. But Israel has strong influence in the media here and with politicians. But young people have abandoned this you know, the whole thing's a mess for them, right? You know, because it's so obvious what they should do, which is condemn Israel, but America can't do that. And they're losing their, you know, like their big support is the liberals and the youth. That's their people they want to win over. And they're going to lose those the young people over this thing, right? And I don't know why there's not more of that conversation in the media. Like, what about the, the hostages? What's happened to them? Where are they now? And let's just bring them home. And then all of the, the harsh words should be directed at Hamas, which started this and now continues to hold all of over 100 uh, Israeli hostages. So the Muslim people, the Arabs versus the Jews, started all the way back with Abraham. And um, I mean, if you, you know, the origin of this conflict, I mean, maybe even traces back farther than that. But biblically, it's Abraham, Isaac, and is it Ishmael? Whatever it is. His two sons of Abraham. And um, there's been beef there ever since, right? And you could say, all right, this land originally belonged to Israel, but, you know, they weren't kicked out. They, were, they left. There was an exodus, you know, this, um, whatever, right? <laughs> but the most recent stuff, Israel's been bullying the Palestinian people who don't have an army. They've been taking their land and there's been an encroachment. So for him to claim that it all started on October 6th is ridiculous. And, you know, it comes down to body count. Like in terms of, again, this is, you know, as much as this is Maya or illusion or whatever this thing I call the show, if you're going to comment on something like this and there's, you know, you're going to use the, the mainstream narrative, then there would be a body count. And the body count, it's not just about dead bodies, but it's about suffering. The trauma that the Palestinian people live under with no, you know, I mean, imagine if you didn't have food, water, and internet and electricity right now for extended periods of time. And there was, you know, people, you didn't know when the next bomb was going to go.
go off and these things. These are the terror these kids are growing up with in Palestine. And pretty much everybody who's honest about this knows that this is a genocide, right? This is, you know, this is oppression. And Fetterman, like, you know, for whatever his brain damage is or whatever his shill stuff, whatever he's, he's getting out of this, whatever reason he's saying these things, I mean, it's just a ridiculous take, right? Well, why do you think there isn't more criticism of Hamas uh, and, and, uh, and, and acknowledgement of the fact that they are holding, however many are still alive, dozens perhaps, uh, hostages from Israel in tunnels in Gaza and elsewhere? Well, of course, Hamas, they're just, they're cowards, they're rapists, and they attack civilians, and they are now hiding in those tel tunnels, and it's really true. Uh, the president couldn't end this war today. Uh, Netanyahu couldn't read this, end this today. But Hamas could end this today right now and all the devastation and the death and, and all of that if they just released it, all the hostages and surrendered. Uh, and, of course, they won't do that. Like his takes are the worst, right? Because Biden could totally end the war. He could turn on Israel. He could say, you guys, we're going to cut off all aid to you and we're done with you or you know threaten them i mean whatever like he could and israel certainly could end the war anytime they want they could stop bombing the crap out of the palestinian people because it's not getting the hostages back and i don't even know you know whatever the reality of that thing is right but he could they could stop right now they could stop killing palestinian people they could stop encroaching on their land they could stop all these things right just stupid you know <laughs> It's just Hamas. It's Hamas. It's the Hamas holes. And, and that's why we're in this situation. Former President Trump uh, was in Pennsylvania last night, Schnecksville, Pennsylvania. He said that President Biden's, quote, weakness was to blame for the attack on Israel and said it would never have attack it had happened if he was still president. Uh, what's your response to that? And are, are you worried about Trump's uh, strength, according to polls, in Pennsylvania? Yeah, well, I got 99 things, and, and I, <laughs> what Trump's saying isn't one of them. <laughs> Are 99 of those things problems, perhaps? <laughs> the word things, could you switch that word for problems, and that actually could make sense? But are they problems, or are they bottles of beer on the wall? Like, do you have 99 bottles of beer on the wall, or do you have 99 problems? Yeah, well, I got 99 things, and, and I, <laughs> what Trump's saying isn't one of them. That And, and I really, my... My uh, advice for him is he should really be focusing on his time in court uh, tomorrow. Um, he will be in court tomorrow in the first cr criminal trial. Are you worried about Trump winning Pennsylvania? Well, no. no. I mean, it's going to be close, and, and Trump isn't, he, of course, he's very popular here. I've been saying that same thing eight years ago in 2016, and I was concerned. And now uh, I'd like to point out that Joe Biden is the only American that ever beat Trump politically, and he's going to do it again, and he's going to carry Pennsylvania, and it's going to be close. But that, you know, that also requires that he's going to put in the work, and he's doing that. In fact, in this upcoming week, he's going to do just that. Um, they did this before. You know, they did the same thing with Joe Biden, the Democrats, and this is the arrogance behind them and the incompetence because they. In 2019, they looked at the guy who would most likely beat Trump or who would have some legitimate chance against him. And the thing about Biden is Republicans liked him because he was very centrist and he, you know, his whole thing, I'm a Pennsylvania guy and, you know, Republicans fall for that shit, right? The Joe Biden stuff. They, You know, Republicans liked him more than other Democrats. And so he was somebody they thought would appeal to the middle. Plus he was, you know, completely handled you know he was so mentally incompetent and so you know he's such a sellout they own him so much that they he would do whatever they wanted him to do so they pushed this guy and they didn't have any legitimate candidates like nobody else they had bernie who had you know the support of the far left socialist liberals you know bernie has passion behind him but he isn't ever gonna he would never win against trump or probably any halfway decent republican like Bernie had no, no chance of winning the general election. They didn't want him anyway because, you know, Bernie's weird and he doesn't believe what they believe. And everybody else really was, I mean, they were all their different levels of horrible 
and they couldn't connect with the public. And so they started to run Biden, and it was clear that he wasn't up for the task. He has, you know, was incompetent, no malarkey campaign. <laughs> like he was just a joke, and he was having mental breakdowns, challenging people to fight, calling up fights, challenging them to push-up contests and IQ tests, and, you know, he was just falling apart mentally. Like he couldn't do it. And they decided, you know, I don't know if COVID was planned. I don't know what happened. I mean, that's a global thing. So I assume that there was some plan behind COVID. But they decided to run Joe Biden anyway, knowing that he was mentally incompetent. In 2015, CNN did a hit piece. I show this occasionally here. You know, this hit piece they did about him being a snoozler, groper, and these things. John Stewart did this. They talked about him being a gaff magnet. They talked about him being a liar. And they talked about him being, like, you know, somewhat senile. And that was in 2015 because they wanted Hillary Clinton to run. But when she failed or whatever happened there, they decided to go with Biden. And they knew at some point they are going to have to deal with his senility. The same thing happened with this guy when he had a stroke and he got up and he gave the worst debate performance ever. But he didn't suffer in the polls <laughs> in Pennsylvania, even though he you know, came out and he said, Good night, everybody. That was, <laughs> that's how he introduced himself. Good night, everybody. You guys remember that, right? And they stuck with this guy who ended up not being able to do his job because of mental illness, depression, and recovering from a stroke. And then now he's doing it badly. And he's pissing off the group they most need and young liberals. But they're stuck with this guy, just like they're stuff, stuck with Biden. Okay, there's two more things I want to get to. This one's about spiritual warfare, and I want to cover these together in a voiceover. Um, but this, one of my viewers uh, posted this on Instagram. I got a blind item about Kyle Roth, but it's more than just a blind item. This is actually a warning for social media influencers. I'm just going to go ahead and read what I have here. A warning to social media influencers, activists, and truth tellers. I never ever post blind items, but this one is important for protecting social media influencers, especially those who have a tendency to expose the criminal activities of the rich and famous. Here it goes. There are tons of reports from psychics and medium workers, celebrities, and social media influencers, particularly involving an A-list celebrity gossip influencer who lost her life recently. People in the entertainment industry will get rid of people they perceive to be a threat through something that those in their industry officially refer to as a spiritual assassination. What is a spiritual assassination? A spiritual assassination is just like putting a hit out on someone, except rather than hiring a hitman to directly commit homicide and or fake a suicide, sorry, unaliving, they will systematically go after a person's finances, career, love life, friendships, reputations, and other aspects of the target's physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being. Even spiritually attacking the target via an etheric space those in the industry refer to as the room. The goal is to orchestrate the perfect crime by intentionally causing so much damage to the target's entire... I got a blind item. I don't talk about this much here, but... Spiritual warfare, you know, there's things that can be done with the use of thought force and on an etheric level to attack people and, you know, destroy things. And the closer someone is to God, the more potent it is. Like somebody who's completely surrendered to God and they get an order to God to destroy something or somebody and they do this work and, you know, they create this thing called the sign Kalpa and it you know, it has to be done. Like once it, once they do that, it, there's no reversing it, there's no stopping it. There have been spiritual people of a higher level who engaged in spiritual warfare when they, when God didn't endorse it just because they got emotional. And, you know, there used to be this cursing of people and a higher developed soul is saying, if they cursed you, you were screwed, especially if you had those samskaras to, you know, the curse was buried inside you, right? Like, it was something that you already had in your samskaric pattern. But this can be done. But these Hollywood dopes, you know, there's unbelievable re repercussions for this thing. Like, I kind of knew about it, and, you know, I went through a whole thing. I really want to talk about it here. But, um, like, I realized it was much better just to rely on God and do godly work and 
you know, be right with the divinity within me. And you're going to be protected that way, no matter what people do to you. And, you know, there's all this stuff in the Sajmark system, the second master of the system, Babaji. You know, the first master had created all these higher developed yogis who wanted Babaji's powers. And they tried to will him to death and they tried to attack him spiritually. And they were all destroyed, right? And on top of that, there's just, you know, anything that you engage in ultimately comes back around to you. But these Hollywood dopes who think of themselves as spiritual and, you know, the emotional, all these people in politics, these powerful people, they engage in this stuff and they, you know, think that they're justified or it's righteous in some way. And anybody who does that and not think about, you know, you only can do something like this if you're sure God wants you to do it. Not some, you know, emotional reason. Um, but it's the most potent thing because there's no, you know, um, if it's done right and if, if somebody has the capacity to do it, it doesn't show in the material world, right? You can't prove somebody's doing spiritual warfare for you. But the best defense against this is, I mean, you can also do, you can have mental, you can put up mental defenses to this kind of thing. And again, this, like, it's training that in terms of, you know, the Saj Mark meditation, the gratefulness meditation I do, inevitably there's a protective layer just from doing that, and then you can, you know, learn to protect yourself. And that's the best way to do it, not to engage in aggressive activity. Because once you engage in aggressive activity, you owe, it's like, it's like a war, it's an arms race, and the same thing can be done to you. And also you form a relationship with the person that you're doing with it, that you're doing it to, on a spiritual level, and you're just going to be tied to them. And it's usually somebody you hate, and you're now tied to them. And, you know, there's an exchange of debt and consequences and, you know, redeeming yourself, and you're doing something you're not supposed to do. I mean, it's much worse than t doing a material act. A material act in terms of the consequences spiritually is minimized, but when you engage in spiritual warfare, it's extensive. You know, but these dopes just don't know this, these New Age dopes, and they're playing with stuff they have, you know, no idea and it may or may not even work for them because they're so depraved and you know all of it anyways let's move on to this other thing here and the other thing here is judge your religion not by its followers by its founder um well i'm gonna yeah that's so it says here jesus said love them matthew 5 44 muhammad said kill them surah 4 8, 89 bless them Crucify them, pray for them, slay them, help them, fight them, give to them, slaughter them, do good to them, besiege them, be merciful to them, terrorize them, forgive them, maim them. But this is a faulty premise right here. <laughs> Judge a religion not by its followers, but its founders. A religion is totally to be judged by the people that do it, right? The organization is the people. And that's what the religion is. Now, the teachings and the man himself, you know, the saint or the spiritual master, or whatever, they're not to be judged by their followers, although, you know, partly they are, right? Because they weren't able to train their followers properly. But for the most part, Christians don't follow Christianity and, you know, Jews don't follow Judaism, whatever the religion is. People don't practice the religion. Most Christians don't follow Christ's teachings. Most, you know, every other religion, I could say that to every other religion. No matter what the followers are, the product. And this implies that Muslims are more violent than Christians and Jews. And it's simply not the case, right? Because if you look at body count, if you look at most of the horrors that have been perpetrated with religions being uh, at the centerpiece, religion having a component in it, religion being, you know, the people being of a certain religion... Christians have killed more people. The British Empire and the American Empire and these Christian countries, they've just killed more people. The body count is there. You could say, well, they're justified, you know, not just killing more people, but forcing the religion, the Crusades themselves, right? So the Crusades were these, you know, Christian zealots were going to Muslim countries and trying to force Christianity on them. They forced Christianity on all these other countries in Europe and then in Africa and India and in America, now Christians would say this is their excuse, that because of John 3.16, which is false, 
It's, uh, you know, Christianity isn't, I mean, Jesus isn't the only saint and he isn't the only son of God. This is all, you know, whatever is said there is not true. Either J Jesus is lying or John is lying or the Council of Nicaea is lying, but it's just not true. And you can believe it, but it's not true, right? Like it's your prerogative to believe, but it becomes an excuse that Jesus is the only son of God and the only way to get to heaven is through Jesus. So Christians will tell you every missionary that, you know, tortured children and, you know, tried to force their, indoctrinate their worldview on these people, these native peoples all around the world, was justified because these people are going to hell because they're savages. Unless they accept Christ, they're going to hell, so you're saving them, right? We're saving them. We're saving them from their resources. We're saving them from their, you know, all these things. And the violence that's there. And the, you know, the all of it, all the negativity that's there, that's on you because it's not true. You know, it's like the, the thing doesn't make sense on any level. God is in every, but we're all children of God. Everything's created by God. God is, you know, there it's God's either everything or there's no God. God is either everything or nothing or both. But this idea that God's somewhere sitting on a throne, he has one son is stupid. Doesn't make any sense given all the other teachings about God. In the nature of the soul, the soul is divine. So each one of us who, you know, every everybody possesses a soul and each one of us has our origin, our creation and the divinity that's our soul that creates our body and our physical existence. That debunks that teaching, right? But comparing one religion to another based in these, you know, excerpts, like I don't know very much about the Islamic religion. And they have had beef with each other, the Sunnis versus the Shiite, they have had beef with the, the Jews, they've had beef with the Christians, they've had beef with the Hindus, you know, it seems to be a very volatile religion, and there are teachings of violence in the, is it the Quran, or whatever it is, and so yeah, there's violence in the, in that religion, but also they have Sufi saints, the Sufi saints that, you know, influenced the Sajmark system that I do, you know, they, they are able, they used to be able to transmit, and there's a spiritual wing of, of Islam called Sufism, which is a higher developed spiritual component. You know, these religions have the religions that's meant for the masses, remedial teaching for people who are, you know, binary thinkers who don't have the ability for abstract thought, don't have the maturity to have a spiritual life to find God within you, right? The kingdom of heaven is within. That's Jesus's best teaching. But Christianity has squashed that and has killed saints and people who tortured saints who found God within and were trying to reform the corrupt church, right? And so they don't have, there's not a higher strain for people who are spiritual in the Christian religion. This is all apples and oranges, right? But you have to accept this, that Christians have done all kinds of damage, Christian countries have, just like Muslim countries, just like every other religion. Every other religion has issues because they've lost the essence of the teaching and the reason and the purpose of the person that brought the teaching into existence. And there's been all these higher developed souls that work together, right? Like when Jesus was incarnated, you know, Krishna and these other higher developed souls were around Jesus or, you know, either incarnated with him or around him um, spiritually because they're all working together to bring humanity up to a higher level. There's higher developed souls that are trying to bring humanity up to a higher level of existence. And they have all these movements. Now, this is the Sajmarg movement is the latest movement that I talk about here. It's already getting corrupted by this guy, Daji, and lying about it. You know, like I could lie about it the way Christians lie to themselves and Muslims lie to themselves, right? Like religious people lie to themselves about their religion, but, you know, what's the point in that? You have to face reality that the essence, you know, there's good Christians who connect to Jesus's teachings. They read the Bible, they know their religion, or their, you know, there's good ministers, there's good, you know, there's good rabbis, there's good, um, you know, whatever the various, um, you know, the uh, clergy are in these different religions. There's always good ones. There's always sincere seekers that find God in their religion, sincere spiritual people, but they know their religion has, you know, gone in south on them, like the religion and the organization itself, you know, that can't be trusted. And so, you know, these memes are stupid because you can't compare, you know, they're all violent, right? They're all violent. They're all corrupt. They're all 
disconnecting people from God. They're all having, you know, horrible effects on humanity. I mean, there's, you know, there's still potentially good things that come out of it. And if you could connect with Jesus directly, then, you know, good for you, right? But in terms of, you know, the spiritual process, it's for each person to do what Jesus did, which was Jesus was born a Jew, but he became a spiritual person. He transcended his religion. And the good spiritual people, the people who, you know, have good spiritual lives, they're born in a religion, and they do the religion well, and they learn the good things that the religion has to offer, and then they go beyond the religion and have an internal heart-based relationship with divinity. And that is, you know, that's the step that everyone has to take, and all people need to take at some point for humanity to stop sucking, right? For humanity to to evolve into something more where we would have a society of saints and then all these problems of degradation would disappear and it's possible because everyone has divinity within them but is isn't probable because humanity just doesn't do it right and when a higher developed soul comes down they take the person's teachings and they warp the teachings and corrupt the teachings so that they can form a for-profit religion and that's what we're seeing around us all the time you know, I saw this meme up on Facebook, and I'm like, you know, why? You know, <laughs> you know, what are you doing here? Like, just, I mean, it's it's fundamentally dishonest. And if you can't see it, then, you know, you're part of the problem. Anyways, only spirituality will save this world. It's Paramano, definitely important for the apocalypse. And the ascension, everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.